So now we're going to show you um, the different marks and the different effects you can get with with brushes. Uh, we today for today we're just co concentrating on the watercolor brushes that we showed you in a previous video. You'll be able to see the brushes at work making the different strokes and the wash brushes as we discussed. So this is the Brown Revolution brush or a spotter brush as it's sometimes called. Um, it will distribute a fairly broad mark as well as fine work. So we'll start by pressing down and just lifting it slowly. And you can see how when you lift the brush, the line goes into a thinner line. And now we'll just do some finer detail work. So let's say if we were doing a, a leaf pattern or petals, it's just a matter of pressing down on the brush just to get the petals. So it, it's fairly simple. That's why these brushes are very versatile. They'll give you just about anything that you want to do. You'll be able to do it using this brush. So the second brush we're using today is the rigger brush. And we spoke about it in a previous video. It's a long hair brush. It lends itself to a lot of lineal work and also a lot of very fine detail work. So we'll just pick up a bit of blue paint here and we'll just get the line going. And as you can see, this is a very, very fine line. And now we're going to broaden it slightly by pressing on the brush so that the whole of a brush is bent to the surface of the paper. And you can see how it's dragging that colour and it's keeping it the same consistency right through. And now we'll use it in a decorative sense just to do some little swiggles. And that's what this brush is used for. You can't use it to put down a lot of paint because it doesn't carry that. It's there for doing lineal work. The next brush we're going to demonstrate for you is the Revolution Bright or flat brush. And I will use it on the same piece of paper as I did the round brush just to give you an idea of how one represents against the other. Okay, so we're going to use the brush against the strokes that we did, or the marks that we did with a round brush, just to see what sort of difference we're going to get. So I'll just drag it around, and you'll notice how even the start of it is very square. And I'll do another mark here, and here, and here. Now, if I was to use that brush to try to do the same sort of petal work that we did there, I just won't be able to do it. Because you won't get that pointed look that we got with a round brush. So that's where the brush, or every brush has its own different use. So this is good if you want to block in the colour nice and evenly as opposed to a round brush. The difference being with a round brush when you put pressure on the bristles or the hair fattens out and pushes material whereas with this one because it's flat it, it will just drag it uniformly. Now we're going to demonstrate for you the mitre brush, still in the same revolution range of brushes. 
the mito as we've discussed is a flat brush but instead of being square at the top it's been cut into a mito shape and as you can see where i started the mark it's actually a point and if i were to use it trying to do the same petal work as we did before but using it upside down I will get that sort of effect. Now by using the brush in profile and using the point there's all the fine detail that you can do with it. And you can also imagine that had you loaded that brush with two different colors that you would get two different colors into your petals of your flower. And now we're going to demonstrate the mop brushes, the quill mops. This is a size 6 quill mop and I'm going to use it on a sheet of roughly A4 watercolor paper just so you can see how much water as a wash brush it will carry. So I've loaded the brush with water and now I'm putting it into the paint to pick up a nice bit of paint. And as I said, that's a size six brush, which is slightly bigger than the average size finger. And let's see how much of that A4 paper it will, in fact, do the wash for us. As you can see it carries quite a bit of paper and that's by doing the wash on a dry paper. Had that paper been nice and wet you would have got double this amount of coverage again. This time we're going to demonstrate the fan brushes just to show you the different effects that you can get um, using a fan brush. All right, so what we have here is some very wet paint that we've just applied and I'm just going to run a fan brush over the paint and that's what we're getting. So you can see how you can get a sort of a grassy effect or even if you wanted to use it in this way it's like lineal work, wavy lines for water etc. Very versatile brush. Having said that it does have limited use but it's one that should be in every kit. Uh, just to finish off for today, um, we've demonstrated a lot of the watercolour brushes. Um, in the next um, segment, we're going to use our oil and acrylic brushes to do different marks on canvas. And also we'll go through how to clean your brushes properly.